Welcome to Master Math. Here's a couple of tips to help you get the most out of these lessons. First of all, they're free. So you can watch it as many times as you need to understand the concept. Secondly, if I cover something and it's confusing to you still, hit your back button and look at it again. And third, when we come to a you try it problem, hit your pause key, try the problem on paper and pencil, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you enjoy yourself. You start learning math at a very young age. I mean, in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, you're learning to add and to subtract and to multiply and to divide. And I'm not sure your teacher ever sits down and explains to you what math's all about. Why do we learn math? Is it just something to keep the teacher busy and make your life unpleasant? No, it's not. Math's a very powerful tool to help you model and understand the real world. Math doesn't mean anything on its own. Every bit of math you talk about and you're learning about is used to help understand the real world. And that's why we spend so much time with math. Today we're going to talk about math and trees and shadows. Well, we've been studying similar figures, and today we're going to work on applying sim similar figures to the real world. Let's say you had a flagpole and a tree in your backyard, and you knew the tree was 10 feet tall, but you wanted to know how tall the flagpole was. Could we use similar figures, could we use mathematics to figure out this puzzle? Do you see a similar figure here? Well, let's think about that for a second. There's also a shadow in place. And the sun's way, way up in the sky. And the sun's shining down on the flagpole and creating the shadow. And the sun's also creating the shadow on the tree. Could we make a triangle out of that? Well, we could. I mean, the, the sun's shining down at the tree, and the light of the sun's running that way, and, it, and it's what creates the shadow. And we know that the tree's 10 feet tall, and we could go out and measure that shadow, and we could find out that that shadow was 12 feet long. So we created a triangle. The hy that, that's not the hypotenuse. That line is the angle that the sun's shining at, that's the height of the tree, and that's the base, or the length of the shadow. Well, we could do the same thing with the flag, because it's casting a shadow too. And we could measure the length of that shadow, but that's the figure we're trying to get. How high is that flagpole? Are these similar figures? Well, they are, because the sun's so far away that this line is going to be the same as that line. And this is vertical height, and this is vertical height. So that's straight up from the, the ground, and that's straight across the ground, as is that. So they are triangles, and they're going to be similar triangles. Now, could we figure out what the height of the flagpole is? We could. We could say that the shadow of the flagpole divided by the shadow of the tree, 22 feet divided by 12 feet, is the ratio of growth of the shadow or the bottom of the triangle. In other words, 1.83 times 12 feet equals 22 feet. Well, if we know that the base is growing by a rate of 1.83, between the tree and the flagpole, the height's going to grow by the same amount. So if we multiplied 1.83 times 10 feet, we come up with 18.3 feet as the height of the flagpole. We could do this another way too. We could create a uh, ratio. We could say that 
12 feet is to 10 feet, 12 feet is to 10 feet, as 22 feet is to how many feet, or x feet? 22 is to x. And then we could cross multiply. 12x equals 10 times 22, or 220. And then we could divide both sides of that, of that equation by 12, and we come up with x, or the height of the flagpole, was 18.3 feet. Try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit your forward key. In this problem we've got a couple of swimming pools and the pool at the top is 25 feet long and 15 feet wide. The pool at the bottom is 30 feet long. How wide is it? Can we figure that out? Well sure, they're similar figures so their sides are going to grow at a constant rate. So all we got to do is figure out what that constant rate is and apply it to the other side. For instance, we know that the pool at the top was 25 feet long and the pool at the bottom was 30 feet long. So 30 divided by 25 will tell us the rate of growth of the length of the pool. 1.2 times 25 feet equals 30 feet. Well, if the length grew by 1.2 or 120 percent, then the width's going to grow by the same amount. And we know that the width of the, of the pool at the top is 15 feet. 15 times 1.2 equals 18 feet. Don't forget to hit the pause button. Well, this problem has the same basic information, but instead of the width of the pool, we want to come up with the perimeter of the pool. And we know that the ratio of growth is 1.2. The, the length increased from 30, excuse me, increased from 25 feet to 30 feet, and that's a ratio of 1.2. Well, if we multiply that ratio of 1.2 times the perimeter of the top pool, we'll get the perimeter of the bottom pool, 96 feet. Same two pools again, but this time we're trying to figure out what the area is. The pool at the top is 25 feet long and has an area of 375 feet. The pool at the bottom is 30 feet long. Now which one's going to have a bigger area? The one that's 25 feet long or the one that's 30 feet long? Well, we know that they're similar in shape, so we know that if the bottom pool is longer, it's also going to be wider because both dimensions of the pool have to grow. So, how would we solve this problem? Well, let's take the ratio of the length of the, of the top pool by the uh, length of the bottom pool, 25 by 30, and that equals 0.83 repeating. Now, because we're talking about uh, area, which is measured in square units, we have to square that growth factor. And 0.83 repeating squared is 0.694 repeating. Now, we take the area of the top pool, which is the smaller pool, and that's going to equal the area of the larger pool multiplied by that growth factor squared. Now how do you know you don't multiply that times the 375? Well because if I multiplied 0 0.694 times 375 I get a number that was smaller than 375 and I know that X has to be bigger than, three, than 375. So I gotta multiply that 0 0.694 times X and to get rid of that 0 0.694, I divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.694, and x is going to equal 375 divided by 0 0.694, or 540. Now there's another way we could do this. Over here we took the ratio of the smaller side to the larger side, the, the top pool to the bottom pool, well, we could do that in reverse. We could say that we're going to take get the growth ratio based on 
the uh, length of the, of the longer pool by the length of the shorter pool, and we get a different growth, growth ratio, 1.2. Now we'd have to square 1.2 because we're talking about square feet, and that's 1.44. And then we multiply the area of the smaller pool by 1.44 to get the area of the larger pool. And that should make sense because if I multiply 375 by 1.44, I'm going to get a larger number. And we know that this, the pool at the bottom is a larger pool. So I have to, I have to multiply that by the 375. And then when I do that, I get 540, the same answer I got over here. Four bags of fertilizer are required for this garden. You plan to build another garden of similar shape. The perimeter of the new garden will be 50% of the perimeter of the first garden. How many bags of fertilizer will you need for the new garden? Well, first of all, you need to think about the fact that four bags of, fer of fertilizer for this garden, that you're spreading that fertilizer evenly over this garden. So the size of the garden is going to be directly proportional to the number of bags of fertilizer you need. A smaller garden would need less fertilizer. If it was half the size instead of four bags, you'd need two bags. Well, now we got to figure out what the size of this, the new garden will be. And it's going to be a smaller garden because the perimeter, and we know also the sides, each of the sides of the new garden is going to be 50% or half the size of the original garden. So we know the growth factor is 50%, but we're now going to talk about the area, which is measured in square feet or square units, so we don't use this growth factor of 50%. We use the square of it. Let's first change that 50% into a decimal. 50% equals 0.5. But we have to square that 0.5, that growth factor, because we're talking about square feet. So 0.5 squared equals 0.25. Now we know how the area changed. The area of the new garden is only going to be one quarter or 25 percent of the area of the original garden. So if we multiply that 0.25 times the four bags of fertilizer we needed for the larger garden, we end up with one and we would only need one bag of fertilizer for the new garden. Well that's our lesson on finding unknown measures and similar figures. And I hope I also made you think about the fact that math is just a tool you can use to model the real world and help you understand the real world better. Now let's go to mastermath.info and download the worksheet on this lesson and try your skills there. Then go back to mastermath.info and take the quiz on finding unknown measures and similar figures. And be sure to come back and see us again soon.